guys? Welcome back, man. Welcome back to Mr. Irv's class in 5-Minute Math. Uh, today we have a, a statistics video, actually. We're going to talk a little bit more about frequencies. Remember what frequencies are. How often the data value appears, right? Actually, we're going to talk about two different types of frequencies in this particular video. Oh, yeah. Relative and cumulative. Now, relative, simply put, is, okay, we're going to start with relative frequency. Now, relative frequencies are frequencies with respect to the total. And in math, when you hear with respect to, that usually means divide. So what we're going to end up doing is taking our frequencies and dividing by the total number of data values there are. Let's get a data set up here. As a matter of fact, let's get the data set. Let's go straight to the frequency chart. There we are. Here is our frequency chart based on these data values. Now, I didn't specify exactly what these data values are, but that's okay. I know that I have three zeros, seven ones, nine twos, four threes, and two fours, right? So I put a line down here for total on purpose. We're gonna need that. So let's go ahead and figure out what these total up to. How many total data values do I have? 25, exactly right. So to find the relative frequency for each data value, let's go ahead and add a column to this. <laughs> So to get the relative frequency, I'm going to take each frequency and divide by the total number of data values I have. Then I can get the proportion of zeros in my total. I can find out how the fraction of zeros I have in my entire list. That's what this relative frequency is. The fraction or proportion of that data value compared to the whole list. So how many zeros do I got? Three divided by 25. Oh, yeah. Now, I put that outside the column for a reason. I'm going to turn that to a decimal and put the decimal inside. Let's put the rest of the fractions. There we are. I took each frequency and divided it by the total. All right. So, let's change these to decimals now. Bang. That's exactly right. So, this 0.12 means that 12%, if I multiply that proportion times 100, it'd be 12%. 12% of my data are zeros. Likewise, 28% of my data are ones, 36% of my data are twos, so on and so forth. So if I added all of those relative frequencies together, what do you think I would get? Ha, <laughs> oh yeah, oh, one. So that one means that I have a complete data set. That's 100%. You know what I would get if I added all of those fractions together, keeping the denominator common and the same? Adding the numerators? <clears throat> 25 over 25, isn't that the same as one? Yes! So, in summary, relative frequencies are calculated to give us the percentage or proportion, depending on how you express this number. This is a proportion. If I multiply by 100, it'd be a percentage. But what proportion or percentage of my data values are each individual ones responsible for. Zeros are responsible for 12%. Ones are responsible for 28%. Twos, 36%. Threes, 16%. Fours account for 4% of my data. Relative frequency, guys. Oh, yeah, cumulative is next. Oh, okay. Here we are at cumulative frequency. We just discussed relative frequencies. Now we're going to talk. Now we're going to talk about cumulative frequencies. Now, Cumulative, just as an English word, it kind of means, I don't know, yeah, that's good. Comprehensive, all included. In this class, for statistical purposes of analysis, cumulative means, cumulative is going to mean a running total or our total so far. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you what I mean right now. Let me get that chart back up here. There it is right there now. I'm pretty sure that's not the same data as in the relative frequencies example. However, it gives us a good chance to add up a new total, right? So what would be my total frequency here? Just for record's sake, I got uh, 10 and 22 is 32 minutes. Nice, nice. Okay, so cumulative frequency, like as a running total, how many we have total so far? So we're going to go line by line and talk about how many we have so far. How many data values do we have up to that point? So let's talk. First line, first data value of zero, we have a frequency of three. There are three zeros in my list. So my total so far for number of data values is exactly right, three. Now, when I add in the ones, how many ones did I have again? 
seven. So when I add those seven data values to the three data values I have before, what's my running total now? Oh yeah, exactly right, exactly right. So, so far, up to this point, including zeros and ones only, I have 10 data values. Now when I throw in the twos, how many twos are there? 13, I'm gonna add that 13 data values to my 10 data values that I have already so far. That 10 plus the new 13 is exactly right. 23, that's exactly right. You getting this pattern yet? I take this number I start with, and I put, that's my starting frequency. I add the seven to get 10. I add the 13 to get 23. Guess what I'm gonna add next? Exactly right, I'm gonna add these nine values in to that 23. It's 23 plus nine. Yeah, that's 32, that's exactly right. That is exactly right. Now, these 32 values that I have so far, I'm gonna add three more data values to that total. What is my final, final total? Uh -huh, 35, doesn't that make sense, right? Because my total frequency, my total number of data values is 35 data values. As I include each data value, I keep a running total of how many data values I have so far. So this chart is gonna be used for a number of reasons, a number of processes and analyses here in class, but this is how the chart is built. We'll talk about what we're gonna do with the chart later. But one more time, I started with three data values that were all zeros. There's my first three data values. Then I added seven ones in to make my total number of data values 10. I added 13 twos, total number of data values is 23. So right now, 23 of my data values are value two or less. You're gonna see questions like that. 32 of my data values are three or less. That's exactly right. Maybe you can go backwards in this chart also. This grand total, if I subtract the three fours out of there, how many data values will I have left? 32. And if I take these nine threes out, guess how many data values I have left? 23. If I take 13 out of that, I have 10 left. If I take seven out of that, I got three left. Oh yeah. That's how you build a cumulative frequency chart. Soon we'll talk about how to put this on a graph and make box of whiskers plots from it. Oh yeah, can't wait. I'll see you then. Bye guys.